The Denver City Council is chewing on more than a few big issues this month that may have a tremendous impact on the city of Denver and Colorado. In addition to the various projects in the Go Bond initiative, the expansion of the Convention Center and the Airport Terminal Hall projects all face big decisions from the Council soon. Penn, there are a lot of issues here to choose from. Uh, take your pick. We have the, the airport's huge, the, the convention center is far from settled, and all this happening in just the next few weeks. You, you know, the, and, and there are rumors out there that city council is beginning to express some concerns about their workload based on the magnitude of these really huge projects. The, the, the Great Hall project uh, is, is huge. Um, the convention center is obviously something we've been wrestling with for a while. And shortly on the heels of both of those, you've got the National Western Center complex coming up. And I mean, that's structured to be a hundred year deal. And so you've got a lot coming at city council, different factions, different points of view. Uh, you know, there is a hope that they won't slow too many of these things down but it, it, they really need to be brought up to speed on a host of things and they've got to sort some of this out because they all impact major policy issues. What happens with the Great Hall is significant because that impacts how DIA is going to function for many years to come. And DIA really is the gateway into our state and it drives so much of the economic engine here. So the fact that they want to stop, be thoughtful, be deliberate uh, makes sense. Same thing with the convention center, and it's going to be a huge deal with the National Western because they'll be presented with a 100-year contract and ask, you know, will you accept it? Ben, as you see all these different issues, you have the National Western Complex, you have the convention center, you have the airport. Do you think there's a, a common, whether it not be a, a core value or something uh, at that higher level that the council needs to keep in mind when looking at all these issues, even though they're quite different? Yes, I mean, I, I think that the council needs to be thinking about the next hundred years, and I think that, frankly, given the context of how this administration behaves, they need to really be thinking about it, because no one else seems to be considering what the long-term impacts of these things are going to be. So uh, just picking one out of the hat, you know, talk about the Go Bond um, initiative that the mayor will be pushing this year, nearly a billion dollars in infrastructure funding, most of it earmarked for road expansion and repair. Uh, you know, when is he going to put his money where his mouth is when it comes to actually investing in multimodal, into doing the concomitant infrastructure development that we desperately need here to go along with all the growth that we're seeing? So I, I encourage the council to continue to raise questions, to slow down. Uh, this process if they're not certain about what the outcomes are going to be because the mayor's office has demonstrated for what six years now that they're all hat no cattle <coughs> and these projects are just the same so we need more scrutiny of all these projects. Patty fortunately uh, besides the infirmed and imprisoned we have a lot of uh, viewers in Denver that care about Denver so what do they need to be aware of as they look at all these issues coming down in their city council being decided in the next few weeks. Well, certainly it's a perfect storm of things that have to be decided in August. If the contract for DIA isn't settled by September 1, we face a $9 million fine. Uh, on the other hand, shouldn't the city council have longer than a month, maybe five weeks, to really look through these documents? It's a huge package on a 34, it's not quite like the National Western Center, it's not 100 years, but it is a 34-year private partnership with, and Denver will not have a lot of control. It'll be getting 80% of the money, but who knows what they want to put, you know, which stores they'll bring into the Great Hall for our fabulous new shopping arena. So there are a lot of things to consider. On the other hand, when you think about DIA, it was the first airport built in 20 years in this country, and it was the first one since airline deregulation. I mean, the city really took a flyer, took a chance on it. It's worked out better than anyone thought, but I don't think that means we can't give this a little more thought. And maybe it's worth a $9 million fine to actually make sure we considered every part of that contract. David, usually these big projects come down the pike, at least around this table, we find uh, six months, a year, a couple years down the road that there were a lot of things involved in the boondoggle that people hopefully should have caught earlier but didn't. Uh, are there any red flags that you've seen so far or at least warning signs that you'd point city council members to before you pass this thing, before you sign that contract, pay attention to this fine print? No, because I, I have not read the 150,000 page document <laughs> and probably most people haven't either and that's the purpose of 
this collusion between both sides of this arm's length contract to squeeze the city council from being able to have the time to review it. They didn't have to have this clause in there that if you don't uh, agree to this by September 1, then you have to pay us millions of dollars. You know, that could have, <coughs> that didn't have to be in there, <coughs> excuse me, and the DIA negotiators should have insisted that it not be in there. You, you may have, have some time, but this was way too short a period uh, for the contract to be properly considered.